Hello everyone, welcome to the third video in our series here. Uh, like I said, it's time for us to do a NAT demo. And uh, now that 5.6 and 6.0 came out, there's been a lot of questions about central NAT. How is that different from our normal policy-based NAT? In our last two videos, we saw how we did our normal overload. So we assigned it to a firewall policy and it just took the outgoing interface of our WAN interface IP address to do the natting. And then we also explored the ways that we could do it through IP pools. So IP pools is when we have a group of IP addresses and we just want to uh, start using them instead of just whatever is on this interface and we kind of demoed that. So in this video we're going to actually go the other direction. So we have a web server right over here, right? And this web server is going to be accessible out on the internet. So this is why we created a DMZ. And now we're going to do what's known as destination NAT. So uh, in the Fortinet world, we call these VIPs, so the virtual IP addresses. So even though someone's going to be going to a public IP address, it's going to NAT into one of our private web server's IP addresses. And what's nice about this also is that it's a DMZ. So there's only one firewall rule to get in and then a stateful to get out and uh, nothing else. So it's completely isolated from the rest of our network. It even has a different IP address up there. So, all right, are you guys ready to do it? We will do it, let's go. All right, so let's start by getting into our FortiGate. So here we are. I'm just drag over our, our Windows machine and we'll go ahead and log in our super secret password. Okay. So the very first thing we're going to do is create the VIP object. Now you're going to see here later on when I get to it, um, when we create a, uh, uh, a destination NAT in central NATing table, it's con done completely different. So just something to keep in mind, this is the traditional policy-based NAT um, operational mode on the FortiGate and the NATing actually is an independent what's known as a VIP object that does the NATing. So let's go ahead and create it. So let's go to policy and object. All right. Oh, come on, buddy. You can do it. There we go. And we'll see virtual IPs. And it's obviously going to have to be a public IP address that we own and that's going to be routed to our FortiGate. So um, just something to keep in mind. And because we are make-believing, we're going to have a 10.200.150 as our public IP address that's going to be associated with our, our web server now. Um, what I meant by pretending is because we're using the real internet, right? we're going to essentially pretend like that's a public IP address. And then our web server itself is rocking on 172.16. Uh, .1.10, okay? And then we'll just call this web server VIP, right? And uh, this is just a recommendation. You can now color code your objects. And it's not a bad idea to color code these things based off of like where you'd use them just as a visual representation. This is kind of just like a little bonus what's up. So here I'm going to have all my DMZ stuff uh, be red just so it sticks out. And I know that these objects are ones I'm going to be using for the DMZ. So uh, we now created our VIP. So let's go ahead and now write the firewall policy for it to allow it coming from the outside to the uh, DMZ. So, all right, here we go. We're going to create new. We'll call this our web server. Our incoming, right, is going to be WAN because it's coming from the internet. Our outgoing is going to pop out to the, v the DMZ. Our source, now we could probably make a country code if we wanted to, if we were going to block it. Uh, by using the IANA standard ports, but here we're just going to say, you know what, the internet's a big place. We'll just say all. And then destination is going to be, oh, check that out, it's our VIP. What? Yep. And uh, believe it or not, you don't need to have NAT turned on down here because all the VIPing happens right here. All the VIPing. All the NAT <laughs> happens right here. And then for services, 
Well, this is a web server, right? So the only two protocols I'm ever going to allow through are these here, too. So we'll hit OK, right? And then let's go ahead and see if it worked. So um, just like before, I suggest using the session table that's in the Fort of View. And I will, uh, all right, here we go. I'll actually uh, make it auto refresh every five seconds. And then let's go ahead and request the, the web page, see if it worked. So for this example, we're going to go all the way across our imaginary WAN to this remote PC. And this remote PC is supposed to be somewhere out there. And we will go to our 10.200.1.50. Obviously, we'd have a DNS request for that. And uh, if everything worked out right, we should get a IIS page. And we're not getting an IIS page. <laughs> I don't know what happened. All right, let's take a look here. I'm going to hit pause. All right, turned out it was a GNS link that wasn't working correctly. I had to rebuild it from the switch to the uh, web server. So I'm like, man, I did that right. What was going on? So let's try that again. Uh, once again, guys, that was not <laughs> that was not a FortiGate thing. That was a GNS3 thing. These links sometimes lose their associations. I don't know why. I had to just rebuild it from here to here because it was down. But once that was fixed, just like we, we were looking for, there we go. Our VIP did happen across the quote-unquote internet. So if we can run over to the other PC real quickly and actually take a look at our um, session table, maybe we can catch it in action. So uh, we'll go to Fort of View. We'll go to All Sessions. And there it is. See the source IP address, right? The destination to the DMZ, and there it is in action. So as you guys can see, it did the VIP just fine. And what's nice about this too is that for some reason, if that web server ever gets compromised, maybe even physically, you know, and someone tries to come out here and, and get out to the internet, I, it's one direction, and that's the, the beauty of a DMZ, right? So see how I can't even ping anything it's it's one direction into the DMZ and nothing's getting out so all right guys so hopefully that was helpful uh, sorry about that small hiccup there um, maybe I'll edit that out maybe not anyways in our next set of videos and I'll probably not get to it tonight uh, we're going to do the central net so we're gonna see the little caveats that happen when we turn it on and the fundamental different way that we do our natting now instead of uh, on the policy, we're going to have a NAT table that has rules. So pretty cool. So all right, guys, um, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.